everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to Lucid's Tournament Game 7, where we are playing Helheim. It is turn 26. Uh, let's jump into things. Okay, so a bunch of... Eh, eh, kind of a bunch of stuff happening. Not really. Um, we did a reviving of a Mound King. We did some reanimations. We did some site searching. We found a magic site in Dindraniga. Spartan 1 and Jade Sork 1 coming in. Hot for us, we found a Forest of Truffles, which is an Earth One, Nature One site. It's pretty cool. And then we found a Glen of Verdant Greenery, which is a Nature One site. So our Nature income went this turn from Goose Egg to Dose. Not bad. Happy about that. Uh, didn't find anything else. Got a proclamation from Agartha and from me. We did not rename our Jarl. That's That's bad of us. Bad, bad profit non-renaming. That, that, that's that's my bad. And then we have some battles where uh, it's, you know, we had our turn last turn. Now it's time for Sarabasha to fight back, right? The battle in the high peaks. Okay, easy peasy. Uh, nothing there except for province defense. Uh, we have a battle here where we attack in Ard. Ah, 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 ah. Whoa. That's a bunch of... Oirapatas and Inaris randomly? What's what's up with that, right? Um, so we've got Oirapatas in the field, we've got Inaris in the field, we've got um what is that? A Witch King? Right? So uh these guys are set to do some horde of skeleton spamming. How much do we have? We've got uh they did not actually communion up. Didn't feel the need to. We've got some Skull Staffs on hand. We've got a Thistle Mace on hand. Cool, cool. Alright, this is like... This is like serious... Gonna fight me shit. Okay, okay. Cool, cool. Well, they're definitely gonna kill this Vanyarl. That's absolutely going to happen. Yep, 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 yep. Alright, not too bad, not too bad. Hmm, interesting. So, we're going to have to watch out for this. Actually, how did I kill two Oirapatas in that? What happened? Was that Holy Avenger firing off? Doesn't make any sense. Holy Avenger proc killed that. Looks like. Looks like. Yeah. Looks like probably Holy Avenger procs. Did some killings. Well. I mean. That's not the best exchange. That's 90 gold. Versus 260 gold. But. Actually a better exchange than I originally expected. So. Yeah. We'll take it. We will take it. Um, okay, so what's up next? We've got... Uh, those were basically our battles, so let's watch other things. We've got a battle between Calum and Agartha. Over here on Agartha's cap. Oh man, so Calum has come back in swinging with an enormous amount of Spire Horns. Uh, a bunch of Griffins kind of thrown into the mix. We've got more of these... Ravashi guys? Not seeing anything crazy with any of them. Got air gems. Ooh, and an air four prophet over here. Okay. We've got some Arya Seraphines. We got another Eagle King over here. Oh, we've got a couple of Eagle Kings actually, with a bunch of air gems on all of these Eagle Kings. Really dedicating some some firepower to Agartha, which it looks like this is maybe mostly chaff uh, or province defense, maybe. 
We get a bunch of air elementals. Ooh, a fucking bunch of air elementals. We've got a bunch of griffins coming down. Ooh, and these air elementals are going to get nasty. Oifa doifa. So much work done on that charge. Just evaporated. Yep. Well, lost four griffins. Nope, it wasn't it wasn't all PD. That was an Earth Raider, five magma children, ogres, some pale one warriors. I don't know if he um if this was just like all he was willing to patrol with, but uh there's a lot that are, that's going to be on top of Agartha's capital pretty soon. So that's kind of scary. All right, what else do we got? We've got a battle in Gifa. Um, yeah, this is one of Saramesha's for fortifications. He has attacked with the, uh, the Woodhinge Druid guy, his mercenary group. And it's up against just an Atavi chieftain, so they're definitely going to win that. Um, and then there is a weird series of battles in Glimmering Fields. Uh, our, we lost Powers of Heaven, but there's a weird series of battles in Glimmering Fields. So, Saramesha attacks Tirnanog in Glimmering Fields, right? You're like, okay. Uh, we've got some Inaris, we've got some Saramesha Cataphracts versus... Ooh, um, just a Mounted Commander and a Barbarian Chief. Oof. Wait, what? Wait, what? So, so it looks as though Saramesha has pulled the old trick of we're going to, we're going to sally forth and then retreat and hopefully get some of our people out of the province, um, which I think they actually do succeed in. So good on them. Um, and then Tirnanog, because Tirnanog moved their army off of Glimmering Fields because they weren't sure if Saramesha was going to attack them. Well, surprise, Saramesha went to Ard instead. Um, but in in response, Tirnanog attacked, and it's only a Barbarian Chief, right? He's definitely going to die. He'll die at least to the archers on the walls, surely, and the Soothsayer there. But what else is there here to defend him? A bunch of undead. That has uh, no commander, so they all start dying. So this one barbarian chief actually kills a bunch of undead <laughs> before he succumbs to, well, nothing. Oh, no, nope, arrows in the back. Gotcha. All right, so Glimmering Fields, he kills, uh, that barbarian chief kills 26 un long deads. Nice. Good shit. Okay. Um, so that's a whole mess of weird combats all over the place. We've got some unexpected events. Uh, Dead Forest strikes again. A Woodhinge Druid has traveled deep into the forest to seek wisdom. Afterwards, his powers of magic seem to have grown. So he's got another nature one. Or or we've got another nature one off of Dead Forest. Or, or another plus one to nature off of Dead Forest. We've definitely got a fertility cult in Ancient Woods that we will have to preach out. Um, and oof, oof, oof. We need the opposite of these types of events, right? I did just say that though, right? I said, um, I, I thought it was going to be like a negative income because I kept bitching, right? We kept getting the plus two income events. And I was like, oh, I keep bitching. It's going to hit me with like a negative income event. Well, yes, but no. It hit me with a negative gold income. Or a negative gold event, so that's annoying. Uh, then we have the Throne of Gaia. So, great. Potentially going to get uh, Earth Elementals around and about. We've got the Arena Battle. So, we can see uh, we at least win our first one. Let's watch. So, first Arena Battle. Um, it's our boy. First two with a bunch of afflictions. Versus a c commander. It was just a commander. He, he got anything? He ain't got nothing. Whack. Wow. Whack. Okay. Whackity whackity. And then it's Hinnom. So... 
Yeah. This is what we kind of anticipated, and this is why we didn't want to dedicate anything big, right? This is why we just sent a hearse, and, and at that, a hearse who was already on his kind of last legs. Um, Phenom sent to Malkart. It does have a flask of holy water, it does have black steel plate, and it does have a demon bane. <laughs> like, Jesus. Alright, calm it down, my man. Um... But he basically just needs to hit us once, and we need to hit him like 13 times or something. So let's see if that happens. No, it doesn't. <laughs> All right, congratulations, Hinnom. Good job. Oh, goodness. Um, get. What did you get? You got the champion's headband. I don't remember what that is. Let's check real quick. Dawn 5, Inspector. The champion's headband is... Dope. Dope, 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 dope. Oh, right. I ha it's not in. I can never find the... I, I, I always have trouble trying to track down the arena items. Because I don't think they're... They're actually... Unforgeable? There we go. That's what it is. There... You cannot get them. Normally, champion's headband, not helmet. Champion's headband is protection 10 for the head, plus 50 leadership, plus 3 inspirational leadership, plus 1 awe, um, and of course must fight in arena. Ooh, that says a couple of other things that it does not say. It also, it says, it says it's cursed. Well, it's unremovable, basically cursed. Um, but that it also counts as quickness and lucky. So that just made that... I mean, when you think about it, all quickness lucky is pretty good on a helmet. Especially for free. That's pretty sweet. That's going to be a dangerous smell cart. Okay. Um, and then we did some patrolling in Brightgate. Very nice. This turn, caveat, um, this turn is it's actually relatively early on in the turn, but I do not know if I'm going to have another chance to do more work on this turn. But there has been, there's, I have negotiation in the works. I have discussions in the works, basically. Um, coordinations and things like that. So some of these orders might change because I might find out things in like the the last minute or so about hey uh, i'm gonna do this you can move here hey etc etc right um but i don't have that knowledge yet so i'm kind of making preemptive moves just to see how things go um or just to have something to fall back to just in case so we're not doing a whole slew of attacks this turn um he is out in relative force, right? He's got five, 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 ard. No, not five, not ard. Um, high peaks. He's got five in high peaks. Um, he may have, uh, oh, he definitely has something in Towers of Heaven. We're actually going to move over there. Um, so we're not going to go crazy in moving around. Uh, adjust something slightly um but we are do, doing something slightly um dicey this turn right so we know he has a 20 stack here in ard um he could he could again strike at us right we have people gathering in brightgate 
Uh, we are going to be moving Jarl Six's forces there with a bunch of Heardmen. We're also going to be bringing in King One with 80 Long Dead, right? Um, and I think this force we're also reinforcing with another five Hell Herdings, right? I think this force is pretty good, right? It's 30 Hell Herdings, six Valkyries. We've got Bernard the Brave, which we are trying to rehire. Uh, we're going to have 60 plus Heardmen. We're going to have 80 plus Long Dead. Uh, I feel decently solid about this, um, this force. So that's good. Um, that is good. That is good. That's good. I don't feel good about this force, about Commander 3's force. I want to combine those two forces, but it's kind of hard to get a good spot going. Zimria is kind of that natural location, right? But unfortunately, he's got a big old stack right here on Art, so we are making kind of a... A risky play here by bringing Commander 3 um, and his army. Really, it's not his army. He's just holding it for someone else, right? Across Zimria. Because if we can make it to Zimria, then we can make it somewhere else together, right? Um, if he hits us in Zimria, that army is probably going to fold, right? If he hits us with, like, five people we've got a little bit of province defense in here in here um maybe they can hold and do something but really i would assume that uh that they'll die if they hit like five oyapatas they'll definitely die if they hit 10 oyapatas but brightgate i think is okay um it, it there is the possibility that he tries to hit brightgate with more than just this, but I think that's unlikely, right? Um, we are bringing in our new prophet as well with some personal gems. Jarl the Six also has personal gems. Um, I think that's mostly it. We're gonna take her nine back. No real reason to have him here. Um, we might end up putting, like, I have this Summon Lesser Air Elemental script on our Prophet. Um, we might put that on, um, Girl 6, 9, and 10. I'm not sure yet, though. Got the gems, um, and if he has Inaris in his, in his armies, then they're worth utilizing versus the Inaris, right? Because if a lesser air elemental gets in the back on an Inari, it can kill him. So, that could be worthwhile. Um, but other than that, we don't really have a whole lot going on. We are sending a priest out to Ancient Wood, hopefully to take care of that. Um, we did get another Jade Sorceress that also ended up randoming Nature 2, so now we actually have three Nature 2s. Which is cool. Um, I wish I could get a water two, but whatever. We're recruiting more people in Dead Forest, recruiting more in Helheim, recruiting a little bit in Koenberg. Mostly Koenberg is just becoming our uh, research capital. Over here in Dead Forest, we're, we're actually recruiting Van Heers instead of Jade Sorceresses because our... our... Upkeep cost is starting to get a little expensive, unfortunately. I'm in a future world, I would consider suiciding jade sorceresses, but probably not. Ooh. We'll see. Um, sneaking around some Jarls to do some site searching, etc. etc. And that's mostly it. Research-wise, we are going to be done with Enchantment 3 this turn, which means we will have Seeking Arrow, we will have Strength of Giants, potentially. We'll have Raised Skeletons for some battles. We'll have Gift of Flight for other battles. This is actually somewhat usable for us, even early on in the game. We can do some uh, tricky stuff with... Um, 
like some guard commanders uh, or some uh, hold and attack uh, hell herding gift of flights uh, cheese. So that can be fun. Uh, but after that, we're going to head up construction a little ways. We want to hit construction four in the next four or five turns so that we can um, start making actual thug gear. Because that's going to be where one of our strengths lie. Um, and we continue to produce more and more undead. Uh, we will probably continue to do that for quite some time. And that's it. That's the turn. So... A lot of this stuff might change as I find out more, coordinate with Tirnanog, etc. Um, but I think the biggest thing is, is that we're kind of pushing towards a conflict with uh, Saramesha, a an actual big battle. Hopefully we can get all of our army together because I think we are fast approaching the point to where if we can get all of our army together, um, we have a pretty good... I think we have a pretty good shot, but I have no idea how many Inaris he has. That's part of the problem. His research is probably fucking crazy right now with fucking Inaris and Magic 3. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Part of the thing is, is, is dancing an army or like... Being able to put an army in his territory to threaten his capital is a big deal, right? Um, now, it is also a vulnerability point, but I'm not forced to just attack with it immediately. I can raid around with the army, right? And then, in the right circumstance, I can be like, aha, go, right? Um, so... It's it's a matter of opening up options. I can't siege a capital without an army. So, gotta have an army in play. Um, it's just a matter of reinforcing that army and seeing, again, it comes down to, we, we're gonna have to fight Saramesha eventually, but we kinda wanna catch them in a bad setup. That's what they keep trying to do with us, right? They keep trying to, and they're sniping Vanyarls here and there, but whatever. All right, that's going to be it. I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.